Oh, okay. Does that toy make you mad? Is this your angry toy? Yeah, okay. You gonna say hello to your friends? No, you're busy? Okay, well, goodbye then. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I make videos about health and fitness and all of those things, endurance sports. So if that's something that strikes your fancy and you don't mind my paltry attempt at covering up my sweaty workout hair with my, my fun hat from Eric and Paula, so that's a good thing, you can hit any or all of the fun-filled buttons down below. Although there won't be any love lost if you don't hit the notification bell. We get a lot of notifications, the buzzing, the beeping, the nonsense. I spend half my time trying to block those, but if you feel like pressing the button, I would appreciate it. But today I am announcing an event I am participating in in about one month from today on August 7th, 2021. And I will be riding an Imperial Century, so 100 miles for cancer. Why you might ask? Well, cancer, that's why. But kidding aside, I am participating in the Ride for Roswell. It's an event that is held annually here in Western New York to support Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Try saying that five times fast. But the Ride for Roswell is intended to raise funds for one of the top cancer centers, not only here in the United States, but in the world. It is a cancer center that has not only a hospital with treatment, clinical trials, but it's also a research institution. So it does a lot of work to help towards the goal of basically eradicating cancer, but at least in the short term, trying to improve the prognoses and to extend the quality and the quantity of lives for those people who are unfortunately diagnosed with cancer. You know, I look around right now and I see that we are a society that is more divided than we have ever been in my lifetime. Not only here in the United States, but globally. We're, we just, we can't even agree to disagree on bubblegum flavor without some social media war ensuing, let alone focusing on larger issues. But there seems to be one major issue that we are inextricably aligned on, and that is cancer. It, it has to go. I mean, it's, it's just awful. I have not met one person, and this, this is not hyperbole, mind you. I haven't met a single person in my life that has not been in some way touched within two degrees of separation by cancer. Whether it's their friend, a family member, a coworker, they have seen cancer pretty much firsthand touch and ravage a life. My grandfather died in 2009, and it was an undiagnosed cancer. It came on very suddenly, and it left a really indelible emotional scar on me and my family. To this day, it hurts just as much. There was no closure. There was it, nothing. We couldn't prepare for it, and we were left thinking, you know, what if? Should it have been caught? Was there a way to treat it? We don't know. We'll never know. We just know that we are living without my grandfather and we lost him far sooner than we should have because of this pernicious disease. You know, I had a friend of mine who uh, worked with me when I was working at General Motors and he had a son with brain cancer. He was seven years old and things were going well until they weren't. And they lost him at nine. He was nine years old. No child between seven and nine, no child period should have to deal with cancer, okay? To lose your son at nine years old, I, I can't even believe it. And you know what? They, they got back up and they continued to raise awareness, to work with nonprofit organizations and charities to continue to raise funds and awareness for cancer. I, I don't know how they found the strength to get through that, but they, they certainly did. They certainly came out stronger on the other side and I'm very proud of them for it because I don't know if everybody could deal with that the same way that they did with such grace and strength. I've seen more and more people throughout the last you know, 12 years since losing my grandfather. Just, I, I, it seems like it's everywhere you turn. And yes, part of that is because we've increased our capacity for diagnoses, which is a good thing. You know, trying to catch it sooner and faster to give people a better prognosis for you know, treatment, extending their lifespans, but it's, it's too much. It's just too many people are afflicted by cancer. It's really unfortunate, but I am glad that we have events like this that are helping to raise funds that go directly to the source, to something 15 minutes from my house that is doing the research, doing the clinical trials, doing the treatment for patients to help to expand their lives and hopefully find a treatment and a cure. I'm very pleased to be able to participate in the event. You know, it's such a touching event to be a part of. The community really does come together in mass. There are tens of thousands of riders. This ride started 25 years ago with, I think, a couple dozen riders. And now it's up to tens of thousands of active participants on the day. And then you have more people who are there volunteering, hundreds, if not 
thousands of people are volunteering at rest stations, at uh, the packet pickup, t-shirt handout, information, you know, whatever it is to support the event. You've got police officers that are volunteering to kind of stand at the corners. They're not getting paid. They're just doing it on their own time to support the event. There's just so much support. Little old couples sitting on the side of the road in their lawn chairs with cowbells telling the riders thank you. Kids who went out onto the street the night before to draw thank you riders in chalk. People just come out as a community, whether they participate in the event, they donate to the event, or they just stand by and show their support. It's an amazing opportunity to witness how the community comes together and is united around a cause. You know, I sit there and I do these events, you know, almost every year that I'm able to do it. And you know, at the beginning, they always, you know, they do a little bit of a speech about cancer and they inevitably ask people to raise their hands if they have cancer or they're in remission. And too many people raise their hands. I look around and it's just, it grabs you by the heartstrings like, wow. There's, there's just so many. And, and certainly there's going to be a bias, a selection bias for people who have cancer at a cancer ride, but it's still too many. There's too many. Why are there so many? It's, it's just crazy. And, and you can go down to the rabbit hole of cause and effect, but somebody, somebody tell me where the cause and effect is in, in a seven-year-old, okay? People's children are dying of cancer. Babies, there's, there's no justice. There's no dignity there. It's just, there's too many. And then they do a moment of silence for the people who are lost. They sing the national anthem. And by the time they blow the whistle for you to take off and ride, all you want to do is sit in the fetal position in the corner and deal with those emotions, right? You, you're just, there's so much going on there. There's the sadness for the people who are lost. There's the hope. There's the inspiration that comes from the people who are surviving. And they're out there riding their damn bike to support a cause that they were able to be on the right side of and continue to live another day for the families who have had to deal with the loss of loved ones. And there's just so much emotion and pride in being able to you know, participate in an event that can help raise awareness and raise funds that go directly to the cause. The Cancer Center is literally like 15 minutes from my house. I've known people who have gotten treatment there. I've known people who have worked there. I've known people who have volunteered there. There's like a connection to community that comes from this event. And that's why I really enjoy and I'm proud of being able to participate in that event every single year. And the reason I'm talking about this on this channel is for a few reasons, actually. First, you know, if you have something like this in your area, maybe it's a diabetes association, maybe it's a cancer foundation like this one, maybe it's whatever, fill in the blank, whatever worthy cause, and they're doing a ride, a park run, a walk, a barbecue. I encourage you to participate. You know, it's an opportunity to come together as a community and just forget all the horse shit and really just be focused on a really good cause. It will absolutely blow your mind how connected people are when you really just get humans together face to face, forget the online, the internet, the nonsense, the drama. They're just coming together as human beings who share a community to support something that really needs it. You know, I, we've been looking at some news articles, if you haven't seen them, especially in the UK, that a lot of these nonprofits or our 501Cs here in the United States, some of them have really been struggling over the last year because we haven't been able to have these events. And a lot of those funds come in from events like this one. People are busy, they forget, right? I'm not thinking on a daily basis, I should really go online and donate to a worthy cause. It's events like this that kind of give you that reminder and sparks your interest like, oh, you know what? Not only am I going to donate, but I'm going to, you know, get my family and friends to donate as well. It just, you know, the marketing, the hype, it really helps to inspire people to, you know, go out and do those things. Yeah, we'd like to say that we're all philanthropic and we're always donating things. You know, okay, every time they ask me for my dollar at the Starbucks or at the grocery store, I give a dollar. But this is different. This is a, a big way to make it an impact on, on the charity or the foundation involved. So if you have something like this in your area, I encourage you to take a look. Hell, if, if there's still some openings, I know that they had to restrict some of their openings because when they opened res registration, they had to do wave starts instead of mass starts because we weren't sure what the restrictions were gonna be like with the pandemic. Hopefully they're opening up some more spots, but 
If you're within traveling distance, maybe you're in driving distance here of Western New York, come on down for the weekend. Participate in the ride. You can ride the ride on Saturday. Take a look at Niagara Falls on Sunday. You know, it's a whole day thing. You can do uh, the Maid of the Mist, the Cave of the Winds, walk right down by the falls, and, and you can enjoy a great weekend here in Western New York. Good restaurants, a lot to he see here in the summertime. So if you want to participate, please come on down and participate. It'd be great. The more the merrier. But look within your area. Look within driving distance. If there's something that you can participate in, or donate to, I encourage you to do so. The other thing is, I think that with a following, having those of you in this small little community here that we've built, I would be remiss to not at least raise the awareness and ask if those of you who are willing or able to donate want to do so, I'm going to leave a link down below. No guilt, no pressure, I have zero expectations. But again, I would be remiss to not at least ask, right? This is a good cause, it's a worthy cause. If I ask for the donation and people still can't, I completely understand. It's just something I'm throwing out there into the internet ether. Now, I am aware there is some skepticism around social media creators asking for donations. You know, there have been some unscrupulous folks out there that have cheated their followers or subscribers out of money. They've made sham websites, made sham foundations. I completely understand that. I'm going to leave all the links down below. You can make a decision for yourself if you feel so inclined. All I can tell you is that the donation link I'm going to leave is my rider donation link. It gives me credit as a rider for fundraising. We all have a fundraising minimum of $200. I write a check each year for $500. I have some checks and cash from my family and friends that I'm going to bring at packet pickup. So those are going to be handled uh, offline, but none of the funds that go through this website ever get touched by me. I never get to touch that money. It goes directly to the foundation. You can see that the website is completely legitimate. It all links up properly through the Ride for Roswell. It's a completely legitimate enterprise. In fact, the, the foundation, the 501C or the nonprofit that handles the funds, it's called the Roswell Park Alliance Foundation, I believe. So it's separate from the cancer center for legal reasons, right? That money comes in to a charity or a foundation. So we make sure that everything that happens with that money is legitimate. I believe 95 cents of every dollar goes directly to the cause. Yes, there's a small amount of money that needs to go to administrative costs. That's the way things are but the money gets you know, segmented out to either treatments or research or clinical trials, all of those things. And there is a third party resource, it's called, I believe, the Charity Navigator. And this third party company actually comes and accredits these charities for basically their trustworthiness. It gives them one out of four stars for how they handle themselves as charities and only 12% of the total charities actually get four stars. This happens to be one of those nonprofits that has earned four stars because they are very trustworthy as a charity. They know that the money goes exactly where they say it's going to go. This is really on the up and up. There's a lot of integrity in this particular foundation. So I encourage you to take a look at it. Again, no pressure, no guilt. I don't expect anything. You know, people have had a very tough year. Some people are just getting their heads above water financially. So I don't expect anybody to go out of their way to do something that they can't afford. People also are philanthropic on their own time. You might be donating to something else. I completely understand that. If you're not interested, I completely understand that as well. I would just be remiss to not ask. And if you think that there's an amount that's too small, trust me, every single dollar helps. If 300 people donate one dollar that's three hundred dollars that could be a treatment for somebody and for every one dollar that they're able to raise through ride for roswell i guess they can leverage that against thirteen dollars of grant money so this money really does matter it really does go to a good cause and they're able to make more money with the money that they bring on board so if you feel so compelled, you can take a look at my donation link down below, or if you're interested in participating in the event, that link's down below as well. I listed the story about my grandfather. If you're interested in reading that, it's on my donation link down below. So if you feel so inclined, I would appreciate if you donated to a worthy cause. If not, no harm, no foul just here to kind of raise the awareness. But if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up for the video, it really does help the video and the channel out quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See you.